Gerard Scarpacey here, co-founder of the Hairbrain Community. So happy to bring you today the second installment in our series with Pivot Point called Professionals Who Practice. If you remember last week, I did some dry cutting with a scissor on a, a Diane mannequin. Today I'm practicing some razor cutting. You guys know how much I love razor craft. And I'm using the Elise mannequin. We'll talk about her in a minute, but let's get into the technique. You can see Elise was previously cut into kind of a long angled bob. Um, as my previous practice session that I did the other day at home. I've been doing a lot of razor craft uh, classes and I wanted to just really run through the technique and how I'm teaching it. Now what I'm working into is what I like to call razor graduation. And I, I know many of you guys have seen me do this before, but I thought it'd be a great lesson to share here today. So starting off by cutting in my first two sections with what we call a closed stroke of the razor. You'll notice I use a folding razor uh, it's not that you have to use this, but I prefer it for balance and accuracy and control. Lots of tension coming in from the fine teeth of the comb. A little bit of over direction is super important here as well. You can see how I comb from the roots and I comb slightly back and I really clamp it in. You'll also notice how my fingers are kind of closed in like a gun, if you can see that, because tension is of the utmost importance here because you're cutting behind your fingers, so it's very easy for that hair not to be controlled and not to be accurate as you're cutting. So when we put in that first section, what I always recommend, because the idea is this section is supposed to be uh, quite defined because it's the baseline of a bob that's gonna have graduation, I always check my first one or two sections with point cutting of the scissor here. So I do my best to get a very clean razor line in and then I define any, any graduation or any excess angle using point cutting. So coming in around here, and coming through, detailing, always checking with the fingers. The goal is that you have very little or nothing to cut off. You know, sometimes it's more difficult than others. Sometimes it needs a little bit more refinement, but just a little bit of point cutting there. Now that feels pretty good, so I don't think I'll need to use too much more scissor work until I get into the baseline over the ears. Next section, sections are about a half inch thick, I judge them by about the thickness of my finger. I've got about half inch wide fingers, and that seems to work perfectly for me. Since we are graduating the hair here, it's going to be really important that the section size is consistent because of the type of graduation that we create with the razor. It has everything to do with the density of the hair. So if sections are thin and thick, you'll have inaccuracy in your graduation. I just want to take a moment and say hello to everyone who's watching. Uh, Elori and Valerie from Hawaii, Michael Snyder, hello. Carol from Mississippi, Nanette. Welcome all of you guys. Thank you for being here. And if you're wondering, that is the voice of Kelly O'Connell here. Uh, she's hosting from behind the camera, so say hi to everyone, Kelly. Hello, everyone. And she is looking for your questions and happy to answer them for you or direct them to me so I can answer them. Okay, so you can see I'm getting into my second section here and it's cut exactly the same. We call this a short or closed stroke and I'm trying to work with the edge of the blade across the hair to minimize graduation. Just moving the fingers very, very gently to get something that's quite scissor-like. And as I mentioned before, it, you could cut these first two sections with the scissor if you prefer or you can cut them with the razor and check them with the scissor. It's really up to you. Um, and your flow of work and comfortability because I really haven't started graduating yet. So it's not that different from a point cut baseline. It's actually very, very similar. Coming in here, a little bit of definition, checking my balance, a little heavy on the left here. So a little bit more elevating and checking there. What's great about these pivot point mannequins, really all of them, and we'll see that as we look at some of the other ones that I've prepared for you, is the hairlines respond really well. So you can get a really great lesson. Sometimes with cheaper mannequins, you know, when you get close to the hairline, the hair just sticks out or it becomes really, really not like a real hairline. You can't practice bangs or fringes or close graduation or anything like that, but you know, with the pivot point mannequins, because of the quality process of designing them, the hair really behaves a lot more um, the way you'd want it to when you're, when you're gonna try this new technique out on a person. So coming in right at the section, over directing slightly back. Now I'm gonna start to create a little bit of graduation by turning my blade a little on a bias. So I was doing what before, it's called edge cutting. 
cutting across the hair one at a time. Now I'm rotating the blade so I'll get a little bit more scrape on that little end of the hair before I actually cut. And this will start to introduce a little graduation onto the surface of the cut. Work my way through. Now the trick is to do the same thing on the other side. So not only am I trying to match the length, but I'm trying to match the angle of the razor and the amount of graduation. A little bit more open here, just getting a little graduation. Gently, gently tapering the surface of the hair a little bit more than the previous section. Continue working on. Now with each section that I cut, I'm going to introduce more graduation. So what that means is the size of the stroke is going to be larger and wider on the surface. And we're going to be working with that blade on what I call the bias. There are three different ways to rotate the blade. You can be on the edge, so if this you know, is the head, the edge is the blade is more perpendicular to the head. Bias, it's a little bit more on a diagonal to the head. And flat, it's totally flat to the head. And each one you know, will introduce more and more texture and graduation to the hair, and you have to kind of think about when to use them. Now, to use this type of technique, you have to master kind of fingertip control. If you try to do this using your whole wrist, um, you'll take off way too much hair. So you'll notice here, Kelly, if you can step back a little bit, a lot of times when we raise your cut, we use the wrist, which can be great for long layered and textured cuts where you want a lot of separation on the ends. But there's another technique where you just use the fingertips of the thumb and the pointer finger. And this is great for more gentle, especially as you get shorter and you're doing graduation. And that's what I'm working on here. So the next thing I want you to think about is that I'm closing my stroke down as I get back behind the ear. If I keep it all the way open from the center to the back of the ear, we'll lose our bob corner. So Kelly, come around and get a good shot of that here. You can see in the center, always over directing the hair slightly back, using, I can see the graduation on the other side right there. Now a little bit more open, now starting to get shorter and shorter and shorter. So if you look at what you've cut off, you can see how it's going actually downhill. And then as we get behind the ear, we want to really close it down. So we come in here and you'll see that it's a very, very short stroke so we don't get any excess graduation. Now combing the hair back and forth, back and forth, that'll allow you to see the graduation starting to develop in the center and the weight being maintained behind the ears, which is really the idea of this graduated haircut so we don't lose the bob line. And I was wondering um, if it helps to keep the head straight. You'll notice I pre-sectioned off a panel up to about the top of the occipital bone. And in this area, I keep the head slightly forward. So let's look at this great tripod. This is the Pivot Point uh, Universal tripod. So with this, I can turn the head in any direction, which is great if I'm looking in the mirror or if I'm teaching. And then it's got a great little control here where you just can loosen this to bring the head up straight or loosen it to bring it forward. For this first panel, I've got the head pitched forward at about 45 degrees. Uh, what works for me is when I am deliberately trying to build weight um, and maintain weight, I keep the head slightly forward. Um, as we get above this point, I'll bring the head much more into a natural position uh, because I want that hair more in a natural fall as the head is curving away from me. Okay, so back to the technique, combing slightly back. Again, a little bit more open in the middle each time. And then slowly, when you hit the mastoid, close it down. So going from higher to lower, or what we like to call more open stroke, to a shorter stroke, or a deeper stroke, to a more shallow stroke. And by the time I get here, I want it quite shallow, so I can maintain my bob line. Coming back in, again, over-directing slightly. Three two, one. So if you think in terms of counting, my openness in the center right now is like at a three, now it's a one, now it's a zero, 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 zero. And I'll explain that again on this next and final section here in this area. Comb this hair down. So I've gone from the first two sections, really the goal was to have as little graduation as possible, and then incrementally create more and more graduation on each section. So that's how I use the number system. So now, let's say that this is going to be about a four. So what that means is from here, four, three, 
2, and you can see what I've cut off. Now going from 2 into 1, always over directing, 2, 1, 0. And that, it, you know, again, it's simple, but it's not easy. And if you haven't mastered the fingertip control with the blade, it's really hard to do this with your whole wrist. Uh, it's a beautiful technique when you use your whole wrist to get really kind of choppy bobs and choppy layers. But for graduation, especially this type of graduation, it's very different. Four, three, two, one. I feel like uh, David Bowie there. Space oddity. Now going from the two to the one to the zero and closing it down and keeping that corner. All right, awesome. Thanks, you guys, all for tuning in with us. Uh, we appreciate your time hanging out with us and sharing here with you guys all. Yeah, so for everyone that's joining, what we're doing here is a special series of having educators and professionals who practice regularly um, to, to better themselves. And I happen to be one of them. I've used pivot point mannequins and tripods for the better point of 25 years of my career to really kind of practice and hone in my technique and my ideas. And that's what I'm doing here. So, what are you looking for as you're, as you're using your scissors? I'm looking to strengthen the baseline and remove the graduation. And, you know, nothing much. So you shouldn't, at this point, if you're taking off tons of hair or inches of hair, you need to think about your technique and maybe come back and practice again a second time on the mannequin. It really should just be small little tweaks on the hairline, small little tweaks. And just doing that before I move on. And then also checking my balance of graduation when I pull it out trying to feel the same density and the same amount, combing the hair back and forth, and you can see we're starting to get a nice graduated line. I check it down against the skin, and then I also check it with movement. You know, if you, um, my particular favorite way of wearing hair is very natural, so I like to check hair when it's moving rather than when it's very, very compressed, because I think people's hair moves, moves a lot. And really the only time I use the scissor here is on the baselines. So here you can, let's see if we can get a good profile shot with the white background. You can see the graduation starting to develop there. Just the way I like it in a very kind of bustled way. I think that's a great word for it. And bringing up the wave. So today we're using the Elise mannequin. This is one of the pivot points to help. Hi Elise. Hi everyone. Elise is very pretty. She's got, what I like about Elise for these lessons is she's got a smaller head shape. Okay, so I'm not overwhelmed by hair and a large head when I'm trying to practice or teach a lesson. Second off, I like that her hair, and most pivot point mannequins are great like this. They have a beautiful natural texture that you can encourage and bring out the wave where you could easily style it. We all know that pin straight hair can be very difficult to style and manipulate, um, where when we want to use these mannequins for styling, having some wave in them is great. I want to show you some other pivot point mannequins that I've worked with this week. This is Vanessa. And you can see Vanessa's got a, a medium-sized head, which is much of a fuller-sized head, and her length is incredibly long. When it starts off, it's one length down to about here. So Vanessa is perfect for practicing long haircuts and styling. Um, this is a long, classic razor cut, kind of worked from the front, almost like a very classic technique called the shake, where you let the hair slide through your hands and you're able to go from sometimes a pretty short bang or fringe all the way down to an exaggerated length in a very oval way. And you can see Vanessa's got pounds and pounds of beautiful, beautiful hair to work with for cutting and styling. And on Vanessa, I actually styled her using a large barrel curling iron. And th this is how great these mannequins style. This was done about a week ago. Um, and then I needed to use her again. And I pulled it out and held the curl so beautifully, I felt like it was even better after a week because, you know, I love hair to look lived in. So this styled super well, held the curl beautifully. Here's another example of one of my, probably the most popular for hands-on classes. This is the Viola. And those of you out there that do a lot of education, take a lot of classes, think you've met Viola before. Viola is a great friend of ours. It's a great example of how with these quality mannequins, you can even cut in a shorter bang or fringe and it'll behave really, really well. And then this technique here is more of a layered razor cut where I maintained a little bit more of the long kind of bob length and then came through and did a bit of slicing and then dried really, really naturally, just using the heat uh, from, from a diffuser and then just kind of tweaked a few curls here and there. So you can see these mannequins behave beautifully. Viola also has a medium-sized head. So now you can compare 
to Elise. She's got a slightly smaller head, still a great density of hair, but a great way to work through the lesson without having to deal with too much hair, which can almost be overwhelming when you're learning or practicing. So Nanette was mentioning that the, that the razor is scary for her, and she has the, um, the feather razor, which I believe she might mean the, the styling razor, the guarded razor. Sure. Don't be afraid, but respect. So working with a straight edge razor is a choice. Um, it's something that you don't just pick up and, and go into, hopefully without training, you know, and that's what Razorcraft is about. For myself, I do classes pretty much once a month all over the country, offering hands-on training and how to use a straight edge razor. Um, and I think, you know, if you want to use this type of tool, you should definitely take the class. You know, videos are great as an introduction and to get you excited and, and for you to get to know educators that you might like to work with. But nothing takes the place of hands-on. You know, at the very least, get yourself one of these pivot point mannequins because we're doing this now for the next couple months where every week or two we'll have a great educator sharing and you can work along with us so you're getting that hands-on experience. All right, Yvonne, you can get the doll heads at pivotpoint.com. Uh, there's a huge range of heads there's you There's an can... incredible range. The reason why I chose Elise today, so number one, she's got a smaller head shape, so it's easier to get through in a way and practice and see what you need to work on. Number two, she's one of the most cost effective or affordable of these quality mannequins. Her price is only about $65. It's actually less than $65. Um, and it's so worth it for this beautiful head of human hair that you can kind of really practice on. Um, you know, where the Vanessa that I just showed you before, it's closer to $200. But again, it's a full head of beautiful human hair. So think about the cost of extensions and so forth. The other thing I'd love to say about Pivot Point um, is that as a business, they practice very ethical production. You know, they're, they're what they call a certified SA8000 company. So what that means is, you know, even people in China or India that work with them, they pay them a fair living wage. So, you know, we do have to think about that stuff as we affect the world that we work in. So you're paying a little bit more but you're getting a better quality product that's ethically produced. Okay, let's get back to the lesson here. And again, thank you Pivot Point for sponsoring this series. And Kel, you can see how I worked into the side now. Now I'm gonna kind of repeat that, just like any graduation, you build the graduation up to about the top of the occipital bone, and then you start to kind of put the roof on the graduation. So if you're watching along and you've done a classic, let's say scissor graduation in the past, you'll know that um, at this point, things can start to get really heavy or perhaps start to look steppy. So this is one of the reasons why I love using the razor for this technique, because even though the hair is getting longer and more solid, that tapering or weight reduction on the ends of the hair will allow me to not get a step or a weight line. And that is possible with a scissor. It's just way more difficult, especially for salon-based work. We want to be able to do things that work out really beautiful, but can be a little bit easier to get the result that we want. So really thoroughly combing from the roots, great tension, coming down, not much elevation. Now staying at that same point that I ended up with, four, three, two, one, zero. And I can do that same thing on this side with the heel of the blade. You'll notice how I switch. When I go to the right, I work with the tip. When I go to the left, I work with the heel. Four, three, two, one, zero. And comb that hair back and forth to see, and look to see that you're not creating a weight line. Very important here. It's one of the beauties of this technique, just a nice bustled graduation. Now the head's in a natural position for the sides of the cut so that we don't lose the bulb line. So again, very easily, I move the tripod into a natural position. Continue to over direct, and now start to work from one into zero so that we have less graduation, especially right above the ear. All right, just want to take a minute and welcome all the new viewers. Uh, Adnan Anzari says hello, as well as Amanda Lewis and Branimir from Serbia. Welcome all of you guys. Thanks for spending your time with us. Logan was wondering about uh, your water bottle. My water bottle is something I picked up on a trip to Tokyo. It's a fun little I like a small water bottle because I like to be able to just kind of put it in my pocket. Yep, that's what Logan um, was mentioning. Yeah, which is, is great. Um, I picked it up in Japan. Next time I go over there, I'm going to try to bring some more back and put them up on the Hairbrain Pro Shop. Tom and Amber Roberts was wondering what kind of razor you're using. So this is something that we're working on for Hairbrained. It's, uh, you know, it's 
a folding razor and it's made here in the US. It's got a beautiful wood handle and you can see it's, cu it's curved so it can be very, very comfortable on your hand. Um, we're working on producing some right now and we'll have them available at Hairbrain Pro probably within the next 30 or 60 days. Comb back, yeah, I mean the comfort is very important and you can see what happens here is it gets more narrow right in this area so that when you grab it and then it's got a nice counterbalance and weight here. Beautiful. Something that, uh, you know, a few years ago I, I, I was working on helping to develop and I'm, I'm glad that we're able to finally get some produced for Hairbrained. So again, you can see the idea of it going from more graduation in the back or a more open stroke. And if I look through, I should be able to see the hair is thinner and more graduated and then gets thicker and more solid towards the front, creating a beautiful razor graduation. The angle of the sections is very important because um, it typically for me, what I found over the years is my angle for razor graduation of my sections needs to be steeper than scissor graduation. The reason being that I use a lot of over direction back. The reason for the over direction back is to create tension between the blade and the hair, but also to help with that angle. So it helps it get that swing forward because the blade pushes the hair forward before it cuts it. So if it's just straight down, you tend to round things off a lot at the front. So tip, little tip there, I like to over direct more when I razor cut um, to counterbalance. And you know, we do that with scissor cutting too. We have to cut the angle steeper than we want it when it's dry. And with razor cutting, that's how I use over direction. So you can see how strongly that's over directed back. And again, constantly looking at the line. I've got a good groove going on this side, so rather than constantly going back and forth, I'm going to stay on this side to complete it. I've got already the baseline in on the other side. So you can see now my sections are at the top of the head. And what I like to do at this point is I start to pivot them rather than take them parallel. Because if I would take them parallel, I'll be working with less and less hair each time. Now again, you'll also notice that as I get down here, I don't elevate much. If I go out here and use this technique, I'm going to end up with a lot more hair taken off. I stay very low, and I still stay in that four zone. Four, three, two, one, zero. So your graduation comes from using your number system rather than lifting the hair. Yes, it comes from the movement of the razor, the way that it tapers the ends of the hair. Now if you also lift the hair, you can get actually even more extreme graduation. So that would be a perfect way to practice. You use a lease here, you practice this technique once at low elevation, and then you try it at a higher elevation. You experiment. I think that's a key word here. We want to talk about being able to experiment as a hairdresser, which can be a little bit scary to do on live paying clients. So the whole idea of this series, for those of you that are just tuning in, it's uh, we've partnered with Pivot Point to do a Professionals Who Practice series um, is to try out new ideas to experiment and to see how it's going to work out for you. Tiffany was wondering if you're still using your, is it still the half inch sections? Yep, absolutely. I would say most of the time when I razor cut, especially when I razor cut graduation, I use half inch sections so that I have a consistent density of hair because this type of cutting is all about how you ma manage the density. So if one section's thick and one section's thin, you'll get completely different effects and the razor will feel very, very different on the actual hair. I'm going to lower her down now that I'm getting closer. All I have to do is lower that, turn it, lock it back in. Now I can reach over the top of the head. We can make sure that that side's parted off neatly. And you can see how I'm pivoting so that my sections stay half an inch. So I've gently pivoted around. We'll get that out of the way. Let's say there's only about one section left on this side. Really looking at the fall of the hair. And you can see there's not much to cut in the center back anymore, but I will start there so that I can still get my idea. Four, three, two, one. And those are the numbers of the size of the stroke. Now getting ones and into zeros here where we want that hair to really hold a bob line. If it ends up a little too dense here, I can always come back and I'll show you a little bit of tipping and slicing. But just like any bob, we don't want this to get too thin or too weak around the face too quickly, or it won't look like anything like a bob. Uh, Meadow was just wondering what this haircut was called. It's called a graduated razor graduation. It's a bob, so let's take a look at the profile. I still got a little bit to cut there. 
But we've got graduation in the back and it kind of A-line, a triangular line into the front. It's a very important uh, haircut to learn with both the scissor and the razor. Creating graduation that transitions from steeper in the center back by the occipital bone to almost one length or what some people would refer to as blunt around the front. And it does it in an A-line or triangular way. That should be a shot that you can see from the distance. Now, again, what's great about these mannequins and this Elise, number one, I love the fact that she's a little bit of a mixed color, so it's dark and light, which is really beautiful, 50% of a darker brown, 50% of a lighter brown. And one of the things that that's really great for is coloring, obviously, you have more options to play around with your color lessons. Um, but it's also nice just to see the shape in a different way. So beautiful color coming through. And also the density of the hair and the natural wave. Because, you know, for me, and it's a personal choice, many years ago, I decided that I was going to try to encourage people to work with their natural texture, natural wave. I never really enjoyed really, really straight or flat hair. So I, I made that my niche. And what's great about Razorcraft is it goes hand in hand with that. Because once you master the ability to taper the ends of the hair, you make the ends of the hair lighter than the root. And if the ends of the hair are lighter than the root, it encourages wave and movement. And when you work with a great mannequin like this Elise here from Pivot Point, you can see that in effect. You know, If I cut it with the scissors and I cut the same shape, which is a beautiful shape and an important lesson, it would be a little heavier on the ends and you'd see a bit more of a solid shape. But since I'm working with the razor, I'm really releasing the curl and the wave. And again, you can see that here on these other mannequins that we prepared earlier in the week. The Vanessa, which is the long, lush hair that I naturally dried and then used a large curling iron. And that was curled over a week ago, so you can see how great it holds up. And then here the Viola, which again was very natural dried, cut in with a fringe this time, which again, one of the things that's great about a great mannequin, you can actually cut bangs and shorter hairlines. Um, and then you can also texturize a bit more because there's enough hair to work with. If the hair is too thin or synthetic, it doesn't respond the same. Where this being great human hair, it's amazing for these lessons. And this would be a great example of how to start out on any one of these mannequins. Start with a long razor cut, then go into kind of a mid-length or bob, and then layer it a bit, create some, some fringe, and then go into a shorter graduation. Then you could go even shorter into a short round graduation or pixie, and then you can even start to practice some of your barbering techniques. So if you really map it out, you should really be able to get almost close to six haircuts out of any one of these mannequins. I have a question about the, um, the angle of your blade. Uh, are you consistently cutting on the bias or are you changing no. or rotating? Consistently. So the first two sections were on the edge um, and now every other section is on the bias. So the, hair, the blade comes in a diagonal, the fingers come around a little bit. And you know, it's a subtle thing, but you can tell when you look at it because there's what I call taper before the line. Here's a good example. You see line and you see little pieces that look almost back combed. Uh, where you use the bias blade because it scrapes a little bit before it cuts. Now again, that could be a bad thing if you're aggressive and you, or you work on hair that's already naturally kind of frizzy or coarse, you could overdo it. Um, so you have to learn how to have control and if you do it with your whole wrist, it can be aggressive. You can use the wrist great for long layers, for choppy bobs, but when you get into graduation, you really have to master fingertip control. Okay, Rebecca was wondering about the long-haired girl. Uh, I believe her name was... Vanessa. The Vanessa. Yeah, Vanessa's beautiful. I mean, that hair, when I took it out of the box, I was like, wow. I mean, this if this was extensions, I think people would have paid thousands of dollars for it. So it makes sense that it's a $198 mannequin because the hair is just beautiful and beautiful to work with. And, you know, all the, this Elise even has a beautiful quality. Um, when you get her, the head shape is smaller and then there's, um, the hair is a bit shorter. I think that the least, the longest hair on the Elise is 14 inches, where the longest hair on the Vanessa is over, I believe, 20 inches. Stephen was loving your razor and was wondering where you can get one. Yeah, this will be coming out soon on Hairbrained. It's going to be the, the Hairbrained cra uh, Razor Craft Razor. We're working, it's being developed here in the U.S. by a metalsmith and a woodworker in Michigan. So super excited about that. And it's already in production. We're, within 30 to 40 days, they'll be available on Hairbrain Pro. 
the balance and the color of the wood is really, really beautiful. And what type of blades does it hold? It holds feather plie blades, which they're still the best in the game. You know, I, I think feather makes incredible tools, and we've always used them, and this will be designed to hold the feather plie blade. So what you can see that I'm doing now is called tipping. This is a way of filtering through your graduation, perhaps adding a little bit more where you need it which is definitely more than likely uh, behind the ear and into the sides because I was very closed. So I'm adding or just sketching in a little bit of graduation above the line. So, Yvonne was wondering, is this how you um, do texturizing using the razor? Yeah, it's one of the ways. I mean, every time you cut with the razor, you're creating texture. You know, even when you're cutting with a very closed, small stroke, texture means the line is not blunt. So even when I'm coming in and cutting with the smallest that I can, the line is still more organic and variegated. Now this is going in, and I use this specifically to check my graduation and add a little bit more filtering to the graduation. You see, it didn't cut it any shorter. It just put a little graduation above the line, just grabbing it with the corner of the blade and sifting through. I believe it's Frank Mussolino over at Craft Hair Studio was, up, one, was wondering how the razor feels in your hand. feels incredible. You know, the shape, the, the curve here, the contour. You know, it's something a few years ago I was involved in, in helping to design it and um, super happy to be able to finally produce one for Hairbrained. And it'll be the Hairbrained Razor Craft Razor. Uh, it'll be available on Hair, Hairbrain Pro soon. All made in the USA, the metal, the wood, and it takes feather plie blades. Beautiful razor. So here you can see I'm just filtering or what we call tipping, using the tip of the razor to just glide through the hair and add a tiny bit of graduation to the last two inches of the hair or so. If I do want to go deeper, like on this last section, this hair is coming all the way across from her parting, pretty far across. Actually, I think we need to reestablish that parting just to make sure. We're in the right place. Come it back. And as you're doing that, Elizabeth was wondering about how much the cost of the razor would be. Uh, it's going to be $225. Handmade in the U.S. The wood is all uh, handcrafted in the U.S. The metal is made here. Um, and again, much like these mannequins, you know, by using a better uh, practice of, of uh, manufacturing, it costs a little bit more. There'll definitely be cheaper razors in the world but they won't be better ones and they won't be better partners to develop them with. So here I'm using a little bit of slicing and that will free up the front a little, even though I didn't want to add graduation to the front. Now what's the difference? I want to create separation. So the difference is back here where I was tipping, this creates more of a graduated or beveled effect and rounds the hair in. Here I want this to be a little bit more free form. So separating the ends, going straight into the hair, every inch or so and tickling through to create separation and then I'll even do some deeper slicing up here by the corner of the eye coming through deeper to create a little separation between the bob and the hair that falls over the face which is still part of the bob but in a way I want it to be a little looser and freer you can see I just kind of peel some of that off so that hair has a little bit more freedom to it I think I've got all the razoring in that I, not, I need to do, although actually I probably should do a little slicing on the light side of the parting too, so bear with me there. Then I'll do a little scissor checking, and then we'll talk about a beautiful natural dry on this wonderfully textured mannequin. So for those of you just joining us, we're here working on a Professionals Who Practice series, which is definitely me. When the opportunity came up um, from Pivot Point, and I said, hey, you know, we love these Facebook Lives and all this education that you're doing. Um, you know, we would love to help supply tripods and mannequins and, you know, help get the word out there about great education. And we talked about it and it was like, you know, for me, if it wasn't for um, Pivot Point and some of the tools that they made, I think my career would have been kind of stunted in a way. First 10 years of my career, I didn't use mannequins to practice or to try new ideas or new techniques. Um, I came from Sassoon, which is a beautiful heritage, and I'm honored to have come from there. But they didn't believe in doing any training on mannequins for lots of reasons, I'm sure. But as soon as I left Sassoon, and I was a well-trained, I think, great hair cutter, especially geometric precision hair cutter, 
I wanted to try other things like razor cutting and dry cutting and even try styling, which was something I never did much of, kind of editorial styling. And I figured, you know what, I'm going to have to get some mannequins and try this out. So I remember my very first order. This is one of my first tripods I ever ordered. This is from uh, 2001. If you can see this guy here, it's one of the originals. I was looking on the website. I don't think Pivot Point makes this one anymore. But I've had it now for 17 years, and it still holds up. It traveled with me in many, many places. Um, so I ordered one of those, and I started to use the viola. And I started to practice razor cutting, practice a lot of the things that I became much more known for, dry cutting, razor cutting, or what I tend to like to call kind of innovative cutting. So for me, it's a personal story. I said, this is a great idea because practicing is what gave me the freedom to expand my career. And I still do it all the time, all, all the time, practicing new ideas, trying things out, or sometimes, you know, just to kind of almost like a little bit of a meditation. It can be nice to cut hair without having to have any obligation. All right, while you're putting the finishing uh, touches on Elise here, um, we were wondering about the curls on the long hair. What did you do uh, to get them? Super, super simple. Used a large barrel curling iron here. Um, and I just came through. The hair had already been like natural dry. When you mean hands. large barrel. Um, large barrel. I, I don't an know inch what and the a size half? is. Inch and a half. It was about that big. Pretty large. And then I just came through with my fingers. I took sections like you would kind of brickwork. I rolled them around the iron, fed them in in a figure eight, um, and let them cool for just about 20 seconds and then started to pull them out with my fingers right away. So again, um, a more loose organic finish. That's just my personal style. Um, and that's kind of what I went with there. Ray Steele is here with us, and I believe she was just in hey, your Ryan, class. It's great having you at Razorcraft out in, in Southern California in Orange County. I hope she mentioned fun. she yep. She mentioned she highly recommends it, and uh, don't forget the band aids. Right on. Yeah, I mean the truth is, once you learn the technique that I call lock and load, which is locking and combing and holding, you, you can be pretty safe. But just like anything, any kind of Anyone who works with sharp objects, you can cut yourself from time to time. Marina but, was mentioning, um, yes, about the tripods in her class. They're a must, and the viola is now named the Erica? And no, they're two different ones, believe it or not. The Erica is kind of a smaller version of the viola. So the way the Elise has a smaller head shape, it's literally smaller, so you can get through the lessons a little bit more quickly. You can teach exactly the same thing, but on a smaller head. The viola has what they call a medium-sized head. So Erica is like Viola with a smaller head, which is great. It's the same kind of solid form mannequin. Um, it's got plenty of hair to work with, but they are two different mannequins. And it, the difference is the size of the head. The size of the head. The, the hair, hair is the same. The is the same and what they call the form. You know, if you ever have any doubt or questions, I found that the Pivot Point website was super in informational on every mannequin. There's more, it tells you where the hair comes from, if it's Chinese or Indian or natural hair. It tells you the exact lengths of it, the shape of the head, and then it goes into a lot of detail. All right, lucky hairdresser, I get to work with all the best products because we don't work with just one styling brand, we work with 16 at Hairbrain. So one of my favorites uh, of all time is the Your Hair Assistant Blow Dry Primer. I use it for almost everything. And here, just misting the hair down first, and it's just kind of like a, a styling lotion that just has a little bit of hold and definition. And then what I've really been loving for curly and natural diffusing is the L'Oreal Professional Techna Art Dual Stylers, the Bouncy and Tender. It's a very fun You just name. like to say that. I love that name. What it is, is it, it's two things that combine in one in your hand. It's like uh, something to make it smooth and something to give it a little bit of hold. And I love this combination. I used it a lot while I was practicing this week. The Blow Dry Primer from Davinez, and then from L'Oreal Professional, scrunching the bouncy and tender into the ends. And then you can either let this dry off completely naturally, or you can do what I love to do, which is use a sock or cloth diffuser over your blow dryer. So this is the YS Park Ion diffuser. Slips right over the nozzle, and then pulls over the back like that. And then you can turn it on, and you'll see it doesn't blow the hair at all. It's just allowing the heat flow. Now I noticed that you Keep your um, concentrator on. I do. So I keep the concentrator on because it allows me to really direct the air exactly where I want it. So I feel like my diffusing is more precise and more in control. And plus, this way I don't lose the concentrator or the nozzle because we all know what happens in the salon when you take the nozzle off. 
you can lose it right away. So I like to keep it on, and I can direct it right where I need it. And at the root, which is what we're trying to work on here first, what's great here is I can emulate how I would naturally dry this. I'm going to put her head forward, really well forward, and let the hair fall naturally forward, which would be the first thing I would do. Why would you do that? It allows me to get in at the roots, because when the hair falls forward, I can really get an exposure of the roots and get the heat in. Now you notice I use just these two fingers like a pincher to lift. Never pulling through the hair, but always gently lifting and getting the heat in at the root. Sasha Kramich and Michaela, welcome. Thanks you guys for joining us. Uh, Tiffany was wondering about the fabric of that attachment. Yeah, it's, it's like a cotton. And then this is the silver and titanium mesh. And what happens is just heat comes out. What I love about this wire spark ion diffuser is that it doesn't blow the hair around. So I still do use a traditional diffuser, a big bucket with fingers, when I'm doing spiral curls and things like that. Or maybe really like long curls? Really long curls. It's a different kind of drying. I call it like hand drying. It's to bring out that natural texture, that kind of really modern, loose, un undone hair which you can then go in and build on with a curling iron or so forth. But for me, it's a great way to get a very natural, low maintenance finish. And when I find all the clients that I work on, they say, I want to do that. That looks really easy. I think I can do that at home. I'd love to try it. So we sell a lot of these to clients that I work on. Hey, Dara Smith. Uh, thank you for your support. And uh, be sure to send us a picture of your mannequin. So getting that head now, perhaps moving backward. So forward, backward, keep the curls moving, keep the airflow going downward. Very rarely will I go up, because that can definitely separate the curls I find and perhaps make a little more frizz than I want. So I bring the head in different positions, perhaps to the side a little, and always able to get that air down, and then cupping the curls from the ends. You know, typically I want a looser root and a tighter end. So we can even get a little bit into scrunching at the ends and just pinching at the root. And then perhaps switching direction, going like this. Get in here at the root. Airflow going down. Cupping or scrunching the end. And getting that root a little bit more natural. Lupe Voss just joined and is giving hey, you a, a great job tons. last night. Showing the world the Aveda Demis, amazing as usual. Can't wait to see you this weekend. For those of you that are watching, we're going to be at the IBS show. Hairbrain has our big event in conjunction or association with IBS. We've got our Hairbrain Video Awards. It's here in New York City on Sunday night. There's about 35 tickets left, so head over to Hairbrain Pro and buy your tickets for the party. It's going to be amazing. All right, so Tiffany, um, this, this diffuser is available at hairbrain.pro. Uh, it's not at Salon Centric or Cosmoprof, but head over to hairbrain.pro. We've got it for you there. Yeah, and all the mannequin and tripod, if you want to start practicing at home more and you want quality mannequins to work with, head over to pivotpoint.com so you can really try them out. So again, just takes a bit of patience here. You don't want to rush it. You want to touch it in a gentle, deliberate way. Or not at all. You could allow the hair to dry completely without touching it, depending on the curl and what you think of it. But at this point, I'm starting to assess the shape. And you can see what I mean by the graduation, developing nicely in the back, really coming around to a heavier front, although it's textured and light enough around the front. So this is what I'd really be looking in the mirror, looking at my balance, deciding how the graduation was coming along. You can see this Elise has a beautiful natural texture of hair. I love it. I wish everybody had hair like this. So I can put a beautiful soft shape in with my razor, do a little defining with the scissor, and then encourage them to wear their hair as the natural fabric that it is. Elise is awesome. Just a few more questions about the diffuser. Uh, the small, there's a small and a large. The small is $24.95. The large is $29.95. And Sasha was wondering if you prefer the small diffuser. I do. Um, 
The only thing, the large is a little bit bigger, so it covers more surface area. I like to work a little bit more up close, so I've never found any benefit for the larger one, personally. Um, so I always use the small one. Yep, the, the large diffuser has a five inch diameter, uh, where small is three and a half. Nanette, thanks for your support and everyone as well. We appreciate you guys spending time with us and sharing hair. So just want to get a little bit more air on it. I'm really going to put her head downward and forward here. Not tighten that lock in. And I really want to get some more air blasted through here one more time. That's it. You just keep repeating the process here. Forward, backward, side to side. And keeping the airflow going down. Now, when you're in the salon, Gerard, do you dry your curls the same way if this were a client? Of course, absolutely. And I've developed a clientele that, you know, appreciates that. You know, if somebody likes their hair blown out, of course I'll talk to them and I'll do that. But over the years, as I build a relationship with them, I definitely try to get people to, you know, come to me and trust me for, for my style. And that's what keeps me happy. I love drawing hair like this. I love to see my shapes come out. And if you're happy with the work that you're doing, you're going to be much more content behind the chair. So yes, I would say most of the time I either use a, uh, like a Denman style brush and just do flat wrapping, or I dry like this with a diffuser, a soft diffuser. All right, I feel like we're just about 100% dry. You see that beautiful? I always love the looks of the 1920s, hair from the 1920s. Again, because they, it's before they were doing, they didn't really have blow dryers, so hair was naturally dried and maybe irons were used, and that's something I've always loved. I'm going to come in now to finish off with the Definition Mist, another one of my favorites from Davinez. It's just basically like an oil spray to take away any of that crunch that you might have gotten to really make that hair feel natural and of course to polish any frizz or you know any flyaways this is great to get it to again just have that more polished but natural look and then I'll come back in with my hands again I don't really like crunchy hair although sometimes curl has to be a little crunchy while you're styling it but then we want to get rid of the crunch and that's what we kind of went for here it's a great example of what the razor does beautifully, the soft graduation, kind of marrying into the longer, wavier bits. Love that shape. And get a little bit more of the oil spray here underneath. Oh, that's the hairspray. Grab the oil. Definition mist. Great. All right, thanks you guys for tuning in with us. Nanette, Sasho, yes, uh, hopefully we'll meet you very soon over in London. Michaela, Lupe, thanks, you guys, for your support. Thanks, everyone. Thank you to Pivot Point for supplying these incredible tripods and mannequins for us to practice with. We'll be back in, in uh, just a few days with some more Pivot Point lessons. This is only number two of six, so we've got four more coming up with Lupe Voss, Ruth Roach, and uh, Stay Gold, Sophie Pack, who's uh, an amazing barber. So we'll see you guys more over the next couple weeks. Thanks for sharing time with me.